got the victory music, but you didn't think it was going to be that easy, did you? The battle of the 6 and 7 seed in the East took place in Madison Square Garden tonight. Knicks and Pacers in game two of their four game series. Welcome back, RJ Barrett. Broadway Barrett was in his bag early. 16 points at the half. Had a couple of nice three pointers. Looked like there was no rust with that injury to the offhand. Knicks jumped out to a 25 point lead with seven minutes in the third quarter. And just like that, we had a cardiac Knick affair. It's never a dull moment between the double teams, the traps, the blitzing, getting out in the fast break. Buddy Heald, Matherin, the Nick Killer, TJ McConnell. The Pacers would not go quietly into the night. And as we got to the fourth quarter, man, we had an absolute dog fight. But thankfully for Cla Captain Clutch, and thankfully for Quentin Grimes, the Knicks were able to escape embarrassment and beat the Pacers, man, 119 to 113. No lead is safe, especially with these Knicks, man. Um, shout out to RJ. Like I said, he looked good coming back in. It was good to see him pick up the offense in the in the early stretch. Brunson as well, uh, because Julius was like a deer in the headlights the entire game. Pacers threw that double team straight at him. And JD, you talked about this on the last show. These teams are going to make him make a decision with it. And... Between, you know, physically, mentally, he just didn't look like he, he, he just looked out of sorts the entire game. And I thought the Pacers did a good job of taking him out of the game. So thankfully, RJ and Brunson were able to pick it up. I love Quentin Grimes' uh, game and activity on both ends of the floor, especially early. Harassing Halliburton, his help defense was good. Shot a couple of uh, a nice three-pointers there. But no lead is safe with the Knicks. Even when Halliburton leaves this game in the third quarter. Knicks have a 25-point lead. And just last night, right on cue, as I'm on SMY and I'm talking about why the Knicks have blown these leads, I said, it's part coaching, it's part on the players. Players, when they're executing in pressure situations, inbounding the ball, handling the double teams, handling the blitzes, and just like that, this Nick team was coughing the ball up left, right, and center. And that is what the Pacers thrive off of. They're top 10 in the league in steals, top 10 in the league in blocks, and number one in fast break points. They only had five fast break points in the first half and finished the game with 21. They got out and ran out, hustled the Knicks. TJ McConnell killing us. Stumbling and bumbling. RJ can't inbound the ball. He's turning it over. Fouls Buddy Heald on a four-point play in crunch time. But like I said, Brunson, Captain Clutch, comes through with seven points in crunch time. And Quinton Grimes follows that up with, and finally when he gets in the game, follows that up with five points. And the Knicks are able to get out of there, preventing a, another meltdown. A win is a win. Yeah. At the end of the night. Because we're here talking about a win, so you know it, it's it's just the roller coaster with this team, and it becomes more difficult to evaluate them and try to see what they could build on. Um, I think you can say the way they closed that last bit where they got Brunton hit that open three, um, and they they you know they created some separation there after the timeout. I'm hoping they take that moment, that sequence, and they can build on that and, and just learn how to close out these games. It's difficult also, CP, because this is RJ's first game back. Yeah. So as you saw with the closing lineup, it looked a little different. And then you saw Tibbs make an adjustment, um, or, you know, with under a minute to go where he uh, went with Grimes. So there's some figuring out to do here as we start to go on a run now with RJ. And, and so let's see, you know, what this team evolves. Because I, I actually think Brunson has gotten even a little bit better in this run uh, where with RJ out because Brunson's been more of an aggressive scorer. Yeah. And, and so, you know, let's see. And you saw early on when they were all clicking, the Knicks looked like a very good team. 
Right. And 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 then, you know, building the 25 point lead was for a reason. They got up there because, you know, they were difficult to defend. And that was with Halliburton on the court. Mm -hmm. So the Knicks have something here to build on in terms of the positives. Now, the negatives, CP, they, they have to figure out a way to listen. NBA is a game of runs. Yeah. This is, I've mentioned a few times, this is a very, very just strange season in the NBA, not only from a Knicks perspective. Just look at these scores on a nightly basis. You're seeing a lot of teams blow leads. You're seeing a lot of just, you know, upsets. However, this team has different expectations, in my estimation. This team, when you have a Jalen Brunson, you're giving $100 million to Julius Randle. You're giving $100 million to, to R.J. Barrett. Pretty much you're kind of stating, at least for now, that you have a core. Your expectations to me have to go a little bit higher. And they have to figure out a way to close these these games. I think, CP, it gets to a point now where once you get a sample size of blowing leads, you got to look at what can I do to, to, to make an adjustment on this to see what we can try to close out these games. One of the things that you're starting to see with these trends is in the fourth quarter, the, the Knicks don't have enough in the tank to score points. Oh. Only 24 points tonight in the fourth quarter. Their fourth quarter has been their worst offensively um, in terms of scoring the basketball. So you're starting to see the other team, you know, a little bit more fresh in the fourth quarter. Look at R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett tonight played the whole fourth quarter. Yeah. Was one of seven in the fourth after he had a strong start. Again, his first game back, and you see that he starts to get cold in the second half, and you play him the whole fourth. You know, that's the, that's something that I think you just have to look at closely there, make adjustments there. Quentin Grimes doesn't play the whole fourth quarter until the end. Right. Don't understand that when, you know, he was shooting well. Uh, you know, I think he finished the game with about 18 points, and, and he was 6 of 11. He shot 50%. From three, one of those three was a key one to close out the game. So, you know, I'm going to give Tibbs a little bit of a, of a pass tonight on Grimes only because it's RJ's first game back, but it's hard to do uh, when you're seeing a trend here where the Knicks, it, it, Halliburton was out. It, it gets yeah. to a point, it doesn't even matter who it is <laughs> right. out there. The same way y'all, y'all talking about these minutes, we got to hold this man accountable, man. Like, this is, like, we. I'm literally watching the same thing from last year mm-hmm. happen right before our eyes. Mm-hmm. Like, all we did last year was blow fourth quarter leads. Thank God we have Brunson because he's able to slow the game down and go get a bucket when time is... When 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 we're, when we're basically trying to survive yeah. in the fourth quarter every single night. And if if... I see Johnny Bryant going up to Tibbs, reminding him to call timeouts, reminding him to bring in Grimes. Like, this is obvious of what's going on, Mm -hmm. and it's not sustainable, man. It's not sustainable. Either somebody's going to get hurt, or we're just going to get into the playoffs and get swept. Because uh, there's no way, man. It's too Manila, man. Everything that he does is either, it's either a lot or a little bit. There's no medium. The guy, the guy's lost, and he's been like that his whole career coaching. This, it, to me, it's not sustainable, man. I'll let y'all go ahead, but I'm sorry, I'm sorry, man. But it, the win to me means nothing if all we're gonna do is try to survive in the fourth quarter every single night. Uh, yeah, have a good uh, one. Hey, fair points, fair points, man. I, I, I think that that's a fair point. Um. <clears throat> I think you know the, the nine man rotation. Yes, team. A lot of teams in the league play nine man rotations. Okay, I just feel like the the at the rate at which our bench is just so up and down, and those are those are benches in the NBA. But for ours, sometimes you get an absolute zeros. Like I said, from Hartenstein's, from McBride, they turn OB into a three point specialist. Number one, I think they need reinforcements, and I think they need to be more flexible with, with the rotation. I, I know we're throwing a lot of shade at Tiz, but mm-hmm. I think he deserves a lot of credit. He's mm. a two-time coach of the year, right? We yep. got one of the youngest squads uh, in the league right now. Okay, They're, they're growing pains, you know? Um, Tibbs, he, he's one of those guys where he really places a lot of trust in, in, uh, in the starters. Mm-hmm. I get it. Uh, a lot of the bench guys, they need to earn his respect ultimately right they're getting there 
Um, there's obviously been some drama with, with Camp, lost his respect, and that's why he's re- riding the pine right now. Mm-hmm. But ultimately, listen, he, Tibbs, the Knicks, the team, they're they're slightly above expectations right now. Sure. I agree we're we're beating the right teams. Our guys are performing. You know, we got stars emerging in Grimes, for instance, and quickly. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, like, what more can you ask for, mm-hmm. right? Okay, that's why I'm not. That's why I'm not hating on on, on all the shade throwing, uh, being thrown at Tibbs right now. All right, that's fair. That's, all I said. that's fair. Mark sprinkling some optimism. He's he's going the other way. I like that. All these Debbie Downers in the chat, man. We won the game tonight, one nineteen and one thirteen. <laughs> Shout out to Tibbs. And uh, the Wizards are now eleven and eight. So don't sleep on them in yeah. terms of at home because we're going to Washington. So there you go. You know, good opportunity to early game at seven o'clock. So good opportunity to go. What is it? Twenty four nineteen. Yep. So let's go five games over five hundred. Oh, let's do it, man. Great show. As usual, and uh, yeah, man, we'll see you guys Friday night. Number one show for the fans by the fans. Make sure you tap in, share this video, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. We out here. Peace.